We apologize for the reposting of this video, but many of our earlier Naruto videos were edited in a style that received copyright claims, resulting in sections of the videos being removed. In order to maintain the quality of the channel and to have full versions of the videos uploaded, we will be re-editing them in a style that complies with Naruto's copyright policy. So with that being said, we will be reposting characters we've already covered throughout the next few weeks, with plenty of new ones mixed in as well. Thank you for understanding, and please enjoy the video. This video was made in collaboration with Narutopedia. For more information, check out the link in the description. The Life of Kakashi Harake from Naruto Kakashi Harake is a shinobi of Konohagakure's Harake clan. Famed as Kakashi of the Sharingan, he is one of Konoha's most talented ninja, regularly looked to for advice and leadership despite his personal dislike of responsibility. To his students on Team 7, Kakashi teaches the importance of teamwork, a lesson he received along with the Sharingan from his childhood friend Obito Uchiha. After the 4th Shinobi World War, Kakashi becomes Konoha's 6th Hokage. Welcome to the Imagi, in today's video we're going over the life of Kakashi Harake. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Early Life Because his mother died when he was very young, Kakashi was raised during his early years by his father Sakumo. Sakumo was famed throughout the shinobi world, having saved Konoha on at least one occasion. Kakashi, in particular, revered his father. During one of Sakumo's missions, after Kakashi was enrolled in Konoha's Ninja Academy, Sakumo made the decision to save the lives of his teammates rather than complete the assignment. The mission's failure had disastrous consequences for the Land of Fire, causing many in Konoha, including the teammates he saved, to vilify him for abandoning his duties. Disgraced, Sakumo committed suicide. Seeing what his father went through and determined not to make the same mistakes, Kakashi decided that following the shinobi rules must always take priority. In the academy, Kakashi earned top grades, earning him recognition as a prodigy and the best of his generation. Ultimately, he became very popular amongst his peers. With his talent soon being recognized, at age 5, Kakashi graduated from the academy at the top of his class in a single year. Upon becoming a genin, he and his classmates Rin, Nohara, and Obito were teamed together under the leadership of Minato Namakaze. In the anime, Minato gave the team a bell test at its formation, assigning the three to take the two bells he kept on his person. Minato often held back less against the prodigious Kakashi than with Rin and Obito, so they couldn't obtain any bells without teamwork. However, Kakashi realized this, only using Obito and Rin as means to an end to obtain the bells. Nonetheless, Minato passed them because they accomplished the goal of the test by working as a team. Minato did encourage them to improve their teamwork afterwards, a message that Obito and Rin took to heart but fell upon deaf ears with Kakashi. Team Minato would go on many missions during its career, but Kakashi's devotion to the rules often made him difficult to work with. Obito, already jealous of Kakashi's natural talent and popularity, was frequently at odds with him and this behavior. At age 6, Konoha officials allowed Kakashi to compete in the Chunin exams with his team, which he passed by defeating Might Guy and became a Chunin. Third Shinobi World War Konoha eventually became embroiled in the Third Shinobi World War. As part of the war effort, Team Minato was assigned to destroy the Kanabi Bridge and Kusagakure in order to cut off Iwagakure's supply line. Minato was needed on the front lines at the time, leaving Kakashi, recently promoted to Jonin at age 12, in charge. Before embarking on the mission, Minato and Rin gave him presents to celebrate his promotion. Obito forgot to get him anything. Shortly after entering Kusa, they encountered an Iwa scout, Mahiru. Kakashi tried to eliminate him with his new jutsu, Chidori, but the attack speed left him vulnerable to counterattack, forcing Minato to step in, save Kakashi, and kill Mahiru himself. Before leaving them, Minato advised Kakashi to not use the Chidori again. Kakashi, Rin, and Obito continued further into Kusa. They were eventually found by Mahiru's teammates, Kako and Taiseki, who kidnapped Rin in order to find out about what their mission was. Obito immediately suggested that they rescue her, but Kakashi elected to abandon Rin, believing that it was more important to finish the mission before concerning themselves with her safety. Obito refused to go along with this and went off to save Rin by himself. Before he left, he told Kakashi that Sakumo had been a hero and that although it was bad to abandon one's mission, it was worse to abandon one's teammates. Kakashi began carrying out the mission alone, but ultimately decided that Obito was right and went to join him. He arrived in time to save Obito from Taiseki with his white light chakra saber, which he inherited from his father. Taiseki turned invisible and tried launching a sneak attack on Obito. Kakashi protected him, but his left eye was badly damaged in the process. 
In that moment, Obito awakened his Sharingan and used it to kill Taiseki. They then entered the cave where Rin was being held, drove off Kako, and released Rin from the Genjutsu he had placed her under. Kako retaliated by forcing a cave in, and Kakashi, due to his damaged eye, was struck in his blind spot and had difficulty avoiding the fallen rocks. Before he could be crushed by a large boulder, Obito pushed him out of the way, becoming trapped himself. Unable to get free and knowing his injuries were too serious to survive, Obito decided to make his last act giving Kakashi the present he forgot to give him earlier, his Sharingan, to replace the eye Kakashi lost. After Rin transplanted Obito's Sharingan into him, Kakashi confronted Kako. His white light chakra saber was destroyed during the ensuing fight, but he succeeded in killing him with Chidori due to the Sharingan's heightened vision. Kakashi was finally able to handle its speed. He went back to where Obito and Rin were, but Iwa reinforcements soon arrived and started constricting the rubble. Obito asked Kakashi to take Rin away and keep her safe, which he did, leaving Obito behind. As the Iwa Nin started surrounding them, Kakashi attacked them for as long as he could, holding them off until Minato eventually tracked them down and finished off the rest. Minato assisted them with destroying the Kanabi Bridge, and then returned with them to Konoha to mourn Obito's death. Despite many from the Uchiha clan being against Kakashi wielding a Sharingan as he had no blood ties to them, Fugaku Uchiha, the Uchiha head, chose to honor Obito's dying actions and let Kakashi keep his gift. During a later mission, Rin was kidnapped by Kirigakure. Kakashi was eventually able to rescue her and started taking her back to Konoha. Along the way, Rin revealed that Kiri had sealed the Three Tails into her body with the intention to, once she inevitably lost control of it, have it unleashed on Konoha and destroy the village from within. In order to prevent this from happening, Rin begged Kakashi to kill her, but he refused, unwilling to break his promise to Obito to protect her and hoping to find some other solution. When Kiri Nin cut up with them and made false efforts to retrieve her, Kakashi fought them off with his renamed Chidori, the Lightning Cutter. During one of these attacks, Rin jumped in front of Kakashi's attack, dying by his hand so Konoha would be safe. The trauma of this caused his Sharingan to evolve into a Mangekyo Sharingan shortly before Kakashi passed out. He was later found by Konoha reinforcements, but none could explain the slaughter of all the Kiri forces. Anbu Career Because he'd lost two teammates in such a short time span, his role in Rin's death, and his failure to honor Obito's last request by protecting her, Kakashi began dropping into a depression. In the anime, many believe he killed Rin on purpose to prevent her from leaking information, earning him the nickname Friend Killer Kakashi. Many, especially those in Anbu, believed he would kill a comrade without hesitation if it was for the sake of completing the mission. He would also spend his days avoiding friends and former classmates, and at night he would be haunted by dreams of himself killing Rin again. Minato, the new Hokage, tried to help Kakashi emerge from the darkness he'd fallen into after Obito and Rin's deaths by assigning him to the Anbu. Kakashi did well in the Anbu, eventually becoming a captain and the leader of Team Ro. However, his successes were owed to his cold behavior and his ruthlessness in combat, signs that he was still upset by Rin's death. Minato therefore tried a different tactic, assigning Kakashi to protect his wife, Kushina Uzumaki, during her pregnancy. Kakashi carried out his duties faithfully, monitoring Kushina from the shadows whenever she left her home. During his time off, he would visit Rin's grave and Obito's engraving to tell him his regrets and how life was going without them. During the Nine-Tailed Demon Fox's attack, Kakashi and many of Konoha's other young ninja were prevented from helping defend the village, instead being confined within a barrier to keep them safe. Minato eventually saved the village from the Nine-Tails, but at the cost of his and Kushina's lives. After which, Danzo Shimura approached a grieving young Kakashi Hatake, noting that it was Hiruzen Sarutobi's orders for the children, even high-ranking ninja like Kakashi, to not help battle the Nine-Tails, ultimately preventing Kakashi from possibly saving his sensei and his wife. Convincing an emotional Kakashi that the third was not the best for the future of the village, Kakashi agreed to join Danzo's root division and spy on the Hokage for him. During a mission, Kakashi encountered another root member codenamed Kinoe, who was able to use wood release. Knowing that wood release was unique to the first Hokage, Kakashi broke into the Hokage residence to see what he could learn about this anomaly. The third caught him, but freely gave him the information he wanted. Konoha had tried to recreate the wood release powers in the past, but abandoned the project for killing too many test subjects. The third then mused that the Nine Tails might have been defeated, and Minato saved had the research been successful. From this meeting with the third, it became clear to Kakashi that the third was not the ineffectual, passionless leader Danzo had made him out to be. Moreover, Danzo had not used Kinoe to try and stop the Nine Tails attack. Realizing he had picked the wrong side, Kakashi told the third about Danzo's plans to assassinate him and the following day personally lured out the assassins, of whom Kinoe was with. 
Kakashi easily defeated him but chose to spare his life in the belief that he would become a valuable ally in the future. Kakashi attempted to resign from the Anbu afterwards for working against the Hokage, but the third insisted his service was invaluable and made Kakashi his right-hand man. From investigating a series of disappearances, Kakashi provided a lead and it was discovered that Orochimaru was behind the wood release research that produced Kinoe. In the anime, Kakashi attacked Orochimaru when the third Hokage failed to apprehend him, but he was paralyzed by Orochimaru's killing intent and Orochimaru escaped. Kakashi followed him once he regained his composure, but he was captured by the Iburi clan, who were loyal to Orochimaru. Kinoe, their ally, convinced them to let him interrogate Kakashi. Once alone, he confided that Danza was making his own plans against Orochimaru, and with help from Yukimi, helped Kakashi get free. Kakashi later planned to use Yukimi to capture Orochimaru, since she was of great importance to him. Later, Kakashi explained that Yukimi's blood could temporarily bestow Orochimaru with the Iburi clan's smoke transformation, allowing him to slip across the border. Overhearing that, Yukimi slipped away and returned to the cave. Orochimaru ultimately killed most of the Iburi clan before escaping yet again, but Kakashi, recognizing that Kinoe's relationship with Yukimi is much like his relationship with Rin was, helped keep her safe. Kakashi decided to leave and not report anything about the Iburi or Root's involvement. Kakashi continued to investigate Orochimaru over the following years, eventually locating one of his secret labs three years after the latter's defection. While there, he was attacked by Kinoe, who Danzo had sent to take his Sharingan. Kakashi tried to reason with him by stating that friendship should take higher priority than the mission. When Kinoe accused Kakashi of violating that creed by killing Rin, Kakashi, enraged, overpowered him in order to bring him before the third Hokage. Before they could leave, one of Orochimaru's snake experiments escaped its test tube and attacked the duo. As Kinoe was taken captive, Kakashi managed to slay the creature. While saving Kinoe, the creature's corpse began emitting a poisonous vapor which quickly infected Kakashi. Kinoe got Kakashi out safely and, having accepted Kakashi's words, gave Kakashi an antidote and chose to abandon his mishu whilst leaving Kakashi a message about it. When Kakashi woke up, he knew Danza would punish Kinoe for insubordination and asked the third for help. With the third's permission, Kakashi forced his way into Root headquarters and stopped Danzo from applying a cursed seal to Kinoe. As Root forces started to surround them, the third showed up to personally authorize Kakashi's actions, and further negotiated Kinoe's release from Root. Kakashi added Kinoe, now with the new codename Tenzo, to Team Ro. Two years later, Itachi Uchiha was added to Team Ro. Kakashi and Itachi were at one point assigned to observe a meeting between Konoha and the Land of Woods. When the Land of Woods Pranja group tried to betray the Konoha forces, Kakashi and Itachi moved in and defeated them. Although Kakashi was impressed by Itachi's abilities, he warned him against his merciless approach and encouraged him on the importance of friends. Sometime later, Itachi asked Kakashi if dead friends' requests should be honored, which Kakashi said they should. Itachi was eventually promoted out of Team Ro and replaced by Yuga Uzuki. Shortly afterwards, Team Ro was sent to the Uchiha clan's compound with orders to pacify a brewing rebellion, only to find the entire clan dead. When news emerged that Itachi was responsible and that he had killed his best friend, Shisui Uchiha, in pursuit of power, Kakashi lamented his failure to have a better influence on Itachi. Because of what happened with Itachi, the third Hokage felt that individuals with kind hearts did not belong in the Anbu. He therefore thanked Kakashi for his years of service and relieved him of his duty, returning him to the standard forces. Over the years, he was placed in charge of several teams of Academy graduates, but none ever demonstrated the teamwork he considered to be so important. In the anime, he started worrying that his own methods were too harsh, but from seeing how his former underlings that he had previously failed prospered due to his teaching, his faith was reaffirmed. Prologue, Land of Waves Kakashi is assigned as the leader of Team 7, comprised of Naruto Uzumaki, Sasuke Uchiha, and Sakura Harano. The third Hokage explains that he is selected for the team in order to keep an eye on Naruto, the Nine Tails Jinchuriki, and in the anime to help Sasuke cope with life after the Uchiha clan downfall. During his first meeting with Team 7, Kakashi is unimpressed by them, finding them all to be too self-interested. He nevertheless gives them a bell test, as he has for all the previous teams he's been assigned, and tells them to take one of the two bells on his person. Naruto launches a first attack before the test officially begins. Kakashi stops him easily, but is nevertheless amused. Kakashi reads Icha Icha Paradise during the test, convinced that he won't need his full attention or both of his hands. Naruto and his shadow clones fail to take a bell, and Sakura, who focuses on looking for Sasuke, is defeated by one of Kakashi's genjutsu. Kakashi then goes and finds Sasuke, expecting the same outcome as Naruto and Sakura, but finds Sasuke was waiting for him. 
Kakashi is forced to go on the defense, and when Sasuke uses the Great Fireball technique, he must close his copy of Icha Icha, but still manages to defeat Sasuke. Kakashi gathers them together afterwards and tells them they've failed, explaining that had they worked together rather than individually, they might have succeeded in acquiring a bell. They convince him to give them another chance after lunch, but Kakashi demands that Naruto not be fed. He secretly watches them as they eat and sees Sasuke and Sakura give Naruto food against his instructions, needing Naruto in top form if they're going to get a bell. Kakashi feigns anger when he approaches them, but tells them that they passed the test for placing the team's well-being above the mission parameters. Team 7 completes a number of D-rank missions, which Naruto believes they're overqualified for. He complains to the third Hokage about this and is able to secure a C-rank mission, escorting Tazuna to the Land of Waves. Shortly after leaving Konoha, Kakashi notices that they're being pursued by the Demon Brothers. He pretends to be killed by one of the Demon Brothers' attacks so he can observe them, stepping in to neutralize them once Team 7 can't hold them off anymore. After restraining them, Kakashi confronts Tazuna on why the Demon Brothers were trying to kill him. Tazuna confesses that assassins have been hired to kill him so he can't build a bridge that will free the Land of Waves from the tyranny of Gato. Although this is an A-rank assignment that Team 7, being only Genin, are unqualified for, they decide to help Tazuna anyway because Tazuna confessed his country is too poor to afford an A-rank assignment. When they arrive in the Land of Waves, they are met by Zabuza Momochi, a former Kirinin. Recognizing how formidable Zabuza is, Kakashi uncovers his Sharingan and engages him, leaving his students in charge of protecting Tazuna. Kakashi initially does well against Zabuza, defeating Zabuza's water clones with his own. When Zabuza succeeds in trapping him in a water prison, Kakashi instructs Team 7 to leave him behind and escape with Tazuna. Naruto ignores him and with the help of Sasuke is able to release him. Kakashi thanks them and resumes his fight with Zabuza, copying his ninjutsu and using them against him. Just as he is about to finish off Zabuza, Zabuza is seemingly killed by a young hunter nin and his body is taken away. Team 7 continues on to Tazuna's home but Kakashi must be carried, having exhausted himself due to overuse of the Sharingan. While recuperating, Kakashi starts to find Zabuza's death suspicious and worries that he might still be alive. In case this is true, he shows Team 7 the tree climbing practice in order to improve their chakra control, which will be useful if Zabuza does indeed return. After a week of rest, Kakashi has recovered and all of Team 7 has mastered the exercise. Naruto is tired from the training and is allowed to keep sleeping as they resume their bodyguarding of Tazuna. When they arrive at the bridge Tazuna's working on, they find Zabuza and Haku, the hunter nin from before, waiting for them. Haku traps Sasuke in his demonic mirroring ice crystals, which Zabuza blocks Kakashi from helping him escape from. Once Naruto arrives to lend Sasuke assistance, Kakashi engages Zabuza in combat. Having learned from his previous encounter, Zabuza coats the area in a thick mist so Kakashi can't use his Sharingan. Because of this, Kakashi sticks close to Tazuna, knowing Zabuza will come for him eventually. Zabuza does indeed attack, and Kakashi is badly injured by Zabuza's Kubikiri Bocho while defending Tazuna. While reeling from his wound, Kakashi senses Naruto using Ninetales Chakra. Fearing that the seal containing the beast is weakening, Kakashi decides to finish the battle quickly. He summons his Ninken and has them track down his blood, which is still on Zabuza's Kubikiri Bocho. Once they locate him, they pin him down while Kakashi attacks with his Lightning Cutter. Just before he hits Zabuza, Haku steps in in front of him and takes the attack instead. As his last act, Haku grabs Kakashi so he can't get away, allowing Zabuza, freed from the Ninken, to try and slice through him in order to get Kakashi. Kakashi pulls away, sets down Haku's body, and, angered by what's happened, proceeds to debilitate both of Zabuza's arms. Gato then arrives to kill them all, Zabuza included, with a horde of mercenaries. Zabuza kills Gato first, and Kakashi scares off the horde with his multiple shadow clone technique. Zabuza, dying from his injuries, asks Kakashi to place him next to Haku. Kakashi complies, and after he passes, buries them both. Their mission complete, Team 7 returns to Konoha, traveling by way of the Great Naruto Bridge that Tezuna finished building. Chunin Exams Team 7 resumes its series of uninteresting missions, but Kakashi is nevertheless pleased by their development. Despite their only recent graduation from the academy, he recommends that they enter the Chunin Exams. He neglects to tell them that they must enter as a team, not wanting any of them, especially Sakura, to feel pressured to participate. He is therefore glad when they all independently decide to take the exams and wishes them luck. Several days after the exams start, Kakashi arrives to watch Team 7 in the preliminary fights. There, he is informed that Sasuke was attacked by Orochimaru during the exams and branded with a cursed seal of heaven. Kakashi warns Sasuke that he will be disqualified if he uses the cursed seal during his match. 
Sasuke avoids doing so, and Kakashi takes him away afterwards, applying the evil sealing method to prevent the cursed seal's use. After Sasuke passes out from the procedure, Orochimaru confronts Kakashi, explaining his plans to acquire Sasuke's Sharingan for himself. Kakashi readies his lightning cutter to defend Sasuke, but Orochimaru decides to leave, confident Sasuke will come to him willingly someday. Kakashi afterwards realizes he would have been killed had they fought. Kakashi takes Sasuke to the hospital to rest, places him under the guard of Anbu, and returns to watch the remaining preliminary matches, having promised Sasuke that he'd tell him all about the other combatants' abilities. After the preliminaries end, Kakashi returns to Sasuke to find all the Anbu dead, killed by Kabuto Yakushi. He tries to capture Kabuto in order to learn more about Orochimaru's plans for Sasuke, but Kabuto escapes. Kakashi is afterwards tracked down by Naruto, who asks Kakashi to help him train for the exam's final matches in a month. Having already decided to train Sasuke, Kakashi refers Naruto to Ebisu instead. In order to give Sasuke an alternative to the Cursed Seal's power, Kakashi spends a month teaching him the Chidori. Training runs long, and they end up arriving late for Sasuke's match against Gara of Tsunagakure. When Naruto tries to warn him about Gara, Kakashi instructs him just to watch Sasuke's performance and is amused by how quickly Naruto's concern for Sasuke becomes jealousy of his abilities. Konoha Crush The Chunin exams are interrupted by an invasion of Konoha, and most of those watching the finals are rendered unconscious by a genjutsu. Kakashi is among those who dispel it, and he starts fending off invading Otogakure forces. When he notices Sasuke going off on his own to fight Gara, Kakashi locates Sakura and sends her, Naruto, and Shikamaru Nara after him to provide assistance. He summons Pakun to help them follow Sasuke. The fighting rages on until Kakashi and his fellow defenders eliminate all invaders in the area except for Gabuto and Baki, who opt to flee rather than continue fighting. Kakashi and the others then converge on the site where the third Hokage fought Orochimaru, but discover that he's died in battle. Kakashi attends the third's funeral a few days later. He arrives late, having visited the memorial stone beforehand to reflect on those he's lost. Search for Tsunade Shortly after the funeral, Kakashi notices cloaked individuals traveling around Konoha. Suspicious, he follows them, but keeps up appearances that he is only meeting Sasuke for lunch. While waiting for Sasuke, he strikes up a conversation with Asuma Sarutobi and Kurana Yuhi, quietly alerting them to the men in cloaks. When Sasuke arrives and the cloaked men leave, Kakashi sends Asuma and Kuranai after them. However, Kakashi starts to become concerned, so he cancels lunch with Sasuke, not explaining the real reason, and joins Asuma and Kuranai. He arrives in time to save them from Kisame Hoshigaki and Itachi Uchiha, respectively. Itachi advises Kisame to keep his distance from Kakashi, stating that his fight with Kakashi would take too long. He also states that his own fight with Kakashi wouldn't take any time at all. He immediately attacks, which Kakashi only barely blocks with a water formation wall. He then gets Kuranai away from Itachi's clone great explosion, and when he looks back at Itachi, catches a glimpse of his Mangekyo Sharingan. He orders Asuma and Kuranai to shut their eyes while he is attacked with Tsukiyomi, subjecting him to three days of torture in a matter of seconds. He is able to remain conscious to Kisame's surprise, and using information earlier provided to him by Jiraiya, guesses their purpose for being in Konoha. They are members of the Akatsuki after the Nine Tails within Naruto. Itachi orders Kisame to capture Kakashi to see what else he knows and to kill Asuma and Kuranai. Kisame is stopped by Might Guy, and they retreat, at which point Kakashi passes out. Guy takes Kakashi back to his home and puts him to bed, where he remains comatose until Tsunade, the new Hokage, comes to Konoha and heals the damage to his mind. Sasuke Recovery Mission Kakashi is not done recovering when he is given a mission assignment, a consequence of Konoha's lack of manpower following the failed invasion. Before leaving, he stops by the hospital where Sasuke has been staying after his own encounter with Itachi and finds Sasuke in the middle of combat with Naruto. As Sasuke is about to clash his Chidori with Naruto's Rasengan, Kakashi catches them both and flings them apart. Kakashi starts questioning Sasuke about his apparent intentions to kill Naruto, but Sasuke leaves rather than be lectured. Kakashi also notices Jiraiya nearby, and assuming Naruto learned the Rasengan from him, asks if that was a good idea. Jiraiya asks the same about teaching Sasuke the Chidori. Kakashi asks Jiraiya to speak with Naruto while he speaks with Sasuke. Before he goes, he assures Sakura that he'll set things right. Kakashi locates Sasuke and ties him to a tree in order to force him to listen to what he has to say. He starts by trying to discourage Sasuke from avenging the Uchiha clan, insisting that even if he's successful, it won't bring back those who are already dead. Sasuke retorts that Kakashi doesn't understand what he's going through, and offers to kill the people most precious to Kakashi, only for Kakashi to reply that those very people are already dead. 
Sasuke is surprised and puts up less resistance, so Kakashi tells him that taking revenge for those that he's lost is not worth also losing those he still has, namely Naruto and Sakura. To that end, he encourages Sasuke to start using Chidori for its intended purpose, protecting friends rather than attacking them. He unties Sasuke and leaves for his mission, intending for what he said to sink in. When he returns, Tsunade informs him that Sasuke has defected to Orochimaru and that Naruto and a team of Genin were sent after him. Upset with himself for not spending more time defusing Sasuke's angst, Kakashi goes after him, fearful that he and Naruto may kill each other. He summons his Ninken to help him track Sasuke and Naruto, eventually finding the latter unconscious at the Valley of the End. Because it's raining, he can't find Sasuke's trail, and besides, Naruto needs medical attention. He takes him back to Konoha and releases him into the care of the Medic Corps. With Sasuke gone to Orochimaru, Naruto decides to start training with Jiraiya, and Sakura trains with Tsunade. Having no students to lead anymore, Kakashi resumes his prior mission schedule. Mizuki Tracking Mission In the anime, Kakashi returns from mission in time to help round up escapees from the Konoha Strict Correctional Facility. Cursed Warrior Extermination Mission In the anime, Kakashi is sent to the Land of Birds as backup for Naruto, Tenten, and Neji Hyuga as they investigate the Cursed Warrior. He takes command of the team and eventually defeats Nagare and Hokushin with relative ease. Tsunagakure Support Mission In the anime, Kakashi is sent to spy on the Takumi village in order to investigate rumors of an uprising. There, he finds the entire village abandoned. He is later part of the reinforcements sent to Tsunagakure to help deal with the four celestial symbols men, only to discover that Naruto's team already successfully completed the mission. In Naruto's Footsteps, The Friends' Paths in the anime, about two years after Naruto leaves Konoha to train with Jiraiya, another tuning exam is held. Kakashi is sent to Amegakure to invite its ninja to participate, a mere pretext for him to investigate rumors surrounding the village. He is stopped at the village's entrance, but is able to arrange a meeting with Hanzo, who is actually Conan in disguise, and delivers the invitation. Although he appears to leave Ame afterwards, Kakashi sneaks back in to see what he can find out. It immediately becomes apparent to him that although Ame's ninja don't know the identity of the intruder, they are aware that someone has infiltrated the village. Kakashi decides to go back to Konoha rather than risk causing an incident. Kazakage Rescue Mission Kakashi is the first person to greet Naruto when he returns from his two and a half years of training with Jiraiya. Naruto gives him a copy of Icha Icha Tactics as a present, which Kakashi wastes no time starting to read. As Naruto goes off to see Sakura, Jiraiya warns Kakashi that Akatsuki will be making a move in the near future. After Naruto and Sakura have had a chance to catch up, Kakashi reforms Team 7 and gives them another bell test. Unlike last time, taking the bells from him is the real objective. Kakashi also decides to take the test seriously by uncovering his Sharingan and closing his copy of Icha Icha Tactics. As with last time, Naruto launches a first attack before the test officially begins, but this time it nearly succeeds. Kakashi is impressed by this and other signs of their improvement, but by nightfall they still haven't taken a bell. Tired of this, Naruto tries spoiling the ending of Icha Icha Tactics, forcing Kakashi to cover his ears so as to not hear it, and shuts his eyes so as to not read Naruto's lips. This allows Naruto and Sakura to each take a bell. While Team 7 tries without success to find a mission to go on that Naruto won't complain about, word reaches Konoha that Akatsuki has kidnapped Gara, the 5th Kazakage, and the Jinshuriki of the One Tail. Team 7 is sent to Tsunagakure to lend assistance in rescuing Gara. When they arrive in Suna, Kakashi is attacked by Chiyo who mistook him for his father, but her brother Ebizo cleared up the confusion before the attack could connect, to Kakashi's great relief at the close call. Team 7 gathers what intel they can on Gara's kidnappers and leave to go after them. Chiyo volunteers to escort them since they aren't familiar with the country around Suna. While en route to an Akatsuki lair, they are confronted by Itachi Uchiha. While they fight him, Kakashi notices that something is off about Itachi, noticeably his lack of use of the Mangekyo Sharingan. The reason for this is discovered after Naruto seemingly kills him with a big ball Rasengan. They were only fighting a doppelganger. Team 7 arrives at the Akatsuki lair shortly after Team Guy does, who are sent as backup by Tsunade. After Team Guy takes down the barrier over the entrance, Team 7 moves in and finds Gara's body with his kidnappers, Deidara and Sasori. Deidara takes Gara's body and flies off, which Naruto and Kakashi go after, leaving Sasori to Sakura and Shio. Naruto makes repeated failed attempts to rescue Gara, prompting Kakashi to encourage patience while he prepares a new ability. Once he's ready, Kakashi uses Kamui on Deidara, but his aim is off and he succeeds only in removing one of Deidara's arms. This creates an opening for Naruto to take Gara back, which Deidara responds to by creating a suicide bombing clone to cover his escape. Kakashi uses Kamui again to warp the explosion away. 
After they regroup with Chio and Sakura, Chio gives her life to revive Gara. Team 7 and Guy attend her funeral in Sunagakure before returning home. Kakashi is unable to walk due to overusing his Mangekyo Sharingan, forcing Mike Guy to carry him. Guy's choice of carrying Kakashi by piggyback deeply disturbs their students. Tenchi Bridge Reconnaissance Mission During her fight with Sasori, Sakura learned of an opportunity to possibly meet with Sasuke in a few days' time. Kakashi must remain in bed while he recovers and therefore cannot go. In his place, Team 7 is led by an Anbu codenamed Yamato, who Kakashi once knew as Tenzo. Before Team 7 sets out, Yamato, Tsunade, and Jiraiya meet with Kakashi to discuss Naruto's deteriorating control of the Ninetales' power. Akatsuki Suppression Mission Although Team 7 was able to meet Sasuke, he was too strong for them to capture and bring back to Konoha. Once Kakashi's done recuperating, he calls them before him and is introduced to Sai, who is effectively Sasuke's replacement on the team. They speak only briefly, but both approve of each other. Kakashi believes the best way to match Sasuke would be for Naruto to create a new jutsu. Before he can elaborate further, they are interrupted by the arrival of Asuma Saratobi and the rest of Team 10. When their students leave to have dinner, Asuma lingers behind to discuss something with Kakashi, only to change his mind when Kuranai Yuhi comes looking for him. To help Naruto create a new jutsu, Kakashi first establishes what his nature is, wind. With that settled, Kakashi trains Naruto on how to learn to use the wind nature. Ordinarily, such training would take months or years, but Naruto, by training alongside hundreds of shadow clones, can do the same training in a mere fraction of the time. With Kakashi's instructions and training grounds created by Yamato, Naruto quickly masters how to use the wind nature. The next step is more difficult for him, combining that nature with the Rasengan. Because Kakashi and Minato Namikaze both failed to combine their natures with the Rasengan, Kakashi can't offer Naruto any tips and can only watch as he tries to develop something. When they receive news that Asuma died in battle with members of Akatsuki, they take a break to attend Asuma's funeral. Because he can be of no further assistance to Naruto, Kakashi leaves Yamato in charge of watching over him. Kakashi, meanwhile, volunteers to help Team 10 avenge Asuma. Shikamaru Nara, having previously come up with a plan, modifies it to take Kakashi's presence into consideration. Once they locate the Akatsuki members, Hidan and Kakazu, Kakashi hides until Kakazu is driven to use his Earth Spear, at which point Kakashi pierces him through the heart with his Lightning Cutter. Kakazu, who has more than one heart, fends Kakashi off and uses the elemental masks of his Earth Grudge Fear to put Team 10 on the defensive. Needing to separate Hidan and Kakazu if they're to have any chance of victory, Shikamaru takes a vial of Kakazu's blood that Kakashi secretly collected and leads Hidan away. Shikamaru is able to trick Hidan into using the blood to curse Kakazu, destroying the second of his hearts in time to stop him from stealing Kakashi's. Angered by the loss of two hearts, Kakazu prepares to kill Kakashi in Team 10. His attack is blocked by the combined efforts of Naruto and Yamato who arrive with Sakura and Sai to lend assistance. Kakashi summons Pakun to lead Sakura and Sai to Shikamaru in case he needs help while everyone else prepares to attack Kakazu. Naruto, having finished his jutsu, volunteers to face Kakazu alone. His new wind release Rasen Shuriken is temperamental, however, forcing Kakashi and Yamato to rescue him when it fails on its first use. It succeeds on the second time, destroying two of Kakazu's hearts and putting the last one on the brink of failure. Kakashi is deeply impressed by the Rasen Shuriken and tells Kakazu that the previous generation being surpassed by the next was perfectly natural. Kakashi then finished him off with a lightning cutter. Three Tails Appearance in the anime, Kakashi leads Team 8 on a mission to investigate one of Orochimaru's recently discovered bases. During their investigation, they're attacked by Guren, one of Orochimaru's subordinates, who traps them in her Jade Crystal Labyrinth technique. Team 7 eventually arrives to lend assistance and helps them escape, but while going after Guren, they come across the Three Tails. Kakashi requests additional assistance from Konoha, and once it arrives, they attempt to seal the Three Tails. Guren and her team interrupt them and the Three Tails gets away, but Guren's team is defeated. They are then recalled to Konoha with Anbu sent to seal the Three Tails in their place. Itachi Pursuit Mission News reaches Konoha that Sasuke has killed Orochimaru. Realizing that this is a good opportunity to try once again to reunite with Sasuke, Kakashi combines Team 7 and 8 into an 8-man squad with their mission to either find Sasuke or his assumed target, Itachi. They split up and look for leads on either Uchiha, with Kakashi providing one or more of his ninken to those without any particular tracking ability. None find anything until witnessing CO. They converge at its epicenter and can detect Sasuke's trail. Fated Battle Between Brothers As they near Sasuke's location, they are intercepted by Akatsuki member Tobi. They make repeated attempts to kill or capture him, but every attack passes through him without sign of damage. 
Zetsu eventually appears and reports to Tobi that Itachi has died in battle with Sasuke. No longer needing to distract the eight-man squad, Tobi disappears. Before he goes, Kakashi notices that he has a Sharingan. Kakashi scouts the area and notices Itachi's Amaterasu in the distance. They rush there, hoping to reach Sasuke before Tobi does, but they are too late and cannot rediscover his trail. Six Tails Unleashed In the anime, Katsuyu meets with them as they return to Konoha to give them a new mission, helping the Tsuchigumo clan protect its forbidden technique. Kakashi sends Yamada with Team 7 to complete the mission while he returns to the village with Team 8. Pain's Assault Back in Konoha, Kakashi is informed that Jiraiya has died while investigating the Akatsuki leader, Pain. He is present when the news is shared with Naruto, who was too distraught to be of assistance and needed some time alone. Before he died, Jiraiya sent a number of things to Konoha that would help them against pain, including an encrypted message. Shikamaru is able to properly console and get Naruto to help him decode it, who realizes that the key to its decryption must be Icha Icha tactics. Kakashi, having the only copy, is asked to read specific passages aloud, which makes him extremely uncomfortable. Nevertheless, the message is deciphered. Pain attacks Konoha soon afterwards. While some of the six paths of Pain draw attention to themselves, others avoid conflict and try to learn the whereabouts of Naruto, who had gone to Mount Myoboku to train. Kakashi guesses this tactic and goes searching for one of the latter group. In doing so, he finds the Diva Path, and by confronting it, he is able to save Iruka Umino. Kakashi tries to corner the Diva Path so he can destroy it with his lightning cutter, but it repels him with Shinra Tensei. Pain, recognizing that Kakashi is a dangerous opponent, sends the Asura path to help the Diva path. Kakashi struggles against both due to the shared vision of their Rinnegan, but their clashing jutsu at least attracts reinforcements' attentions. Choza and Choji Akamichi cripple the Asura path while they arrive. From careful observation of the Diva path's abilities, Kakashi notices a brief cooldown period between its jutsu. To take advantage of this, Kakashi plants chains under it and has Choza and Choji attack it from opposite sides. When they are deflected by Shinra Tensei, they grab the chains and restrain him, giving Kakashi an opportunity to attack with his lightning cutter. Before he can land the blow, the Asura Path uses itself as a shield, giving the Diva Path time to counter. It defeats all of Kakashi's reinforcements and binds Kakashi in the rubble. Anticipating that Kakashi will interfere if allowed to live, the Diva Path propels a nail at his head to kill him and leaves. Kakashi, however, only pretends to be dead, warping away the nail at the last moment with Kamui. When Choji wakes up, Kakashi sends him to Tsunade to tell her everything they've learned about the Diva Path abilities. The still-functioning Asura Path fires a missile at Choji in an attempt to stop him, forcing Kakashi to use Kamui again to warp away the missile. This depletes his chakra reserves and causes his death. After dying, Kakashi finds his father, Sakumo, waiting for him. He entreats Kakashi to tell him about his life, with which Kakashi complies. He concludes his story by saying that he understands the choices Sakumo made when he was alive and he is proud to be his son. Just then, a light envelops Kakashi, a sign of his revival. Before Kakashi returns to the living plane, Sakamo thanks him for putting him at peace at long last, allowing him to continue to the afterlife. Kakashi wakes up, surprising those nearby. He is informed of what happened while he was dead, such as that Pain destroyed the village and that Naruto, upon returning, defeated Pain. As Naruto returns to Konoha, Kakashi goes to meet him and carries him back, where his victory is celebrated by all the villagers. Past Arc, the Locus of Konoha in the anime, a traveling musician visits Konoha as it starts rebuilding. Seeing the musician reminds Kakashi of Team 7's encounter with Hanare of the Jomei village. 5 Kage Summit Naruto reflects on Sasuke with Kakashi and Sakura. While he does so, word reaches them that Danzo Shimura has become the new Hokage and that Danzo's first degree has been to allow Sasuke's disposal as a missing nin, something Tsunade had never permitted. Naruto insists on trying to reason with Danzo, which Kakashi warns him will not work. When this indeed fails, Naruto decides to talk with the fourth Raikage instead, who has made it his goal to personally kill Sasuke. Despite the travel limitations in place due to the approaching Five Kage summit, Kakashi and Yamato agree to accompany him. Kakashi neutralizes the Anbu assigned to keep an eye on Naruto, and Yamato plants his transmission wood on Team Samui in order to follow them to the Raikage. When they find the Raikage in the Land of Iron, Kakashi, the only one amongst them that the Raikage recognizes, asks that Naruto be allowed to speak with him. The Rekage permits it, but even with his and Yamato's support, he refuses Naruto's request to forgive Sasuke's recent work with Akatsuki and leaves them. They stay at an inn nearby while deciding what to do, where Naruto is confronted by Tobi. Having expected him, Kakashi and Yamato attack and restrain him, though he points out that he can escape whenever he wants. Rather than do that, he tells them about Sasuke's motivations, to take vengeance on Konoha for forcing Itachi to kill the Uchiha clan. 
They doubt what he said regarding the Uchiha clan downfall, but Toby is unconcerned, leaving once he's finished saying to Naruto what he wanted to. Afterwards, Kakashi encourages that the three of them keep what Toby said between them until they knew more and if what Toby said was true. Naruto decides that the only course of action left is to speak with Sasuke himself. His attempt to locate Sasuke is interrupted by the arrival of Sai and Sakura, the latter of whom tells Naruto she loves him. Kakashi doubts that this is the real reason for coming all the way to the Land of Iron, which one of Sai's ink clones confirms after Sakura and her entourage leave. The rest of the Konoha 11 have decided that it's their responsibility as Sasuke's former friends to kill him before he sparks a war, a burden Sakura has taken for herself. Before they can go after her, they are met by Gara and his bodyguards, who tell them about Sasuke's attack on the summit and Tobi's declaration of the Fourth Shinobi World War. Gara also shares the Five Kage's request that Kakashi represent Konoha going forward, owing to Danzo's behavior during the Kage summit. Naruto is overwhelmed by all the developments going on and passes out. Kakashi leaves Naruto with Yamato and has Sai's ink clone guide him to Sakura so he can stop her. The clone dissolves along the way, which it explains to be because Sakura knocked out the original Sai. Kakashi catches up with her in time to stop Sasuke from killing her with Chidori. Kakashi tells Sakura that she doesn't need to take responsibility for Sasuke, since he, as Sasuke's former teacher, is much more to blame for the team's growing rift and current dire situation. He asks Sasuke one more time to let go of his thirst for vengeance, but Sasuke laughs in his face, having been too corrupted by Tobi to be reasoned with any longer. As he prepares for battle, Kakashi remarks that he finally understands what the third Hokage went through with Orochimaru. Sasuke uses his Susanoo to fire an arrow at Kakashi, which he warps away with Kamui. Sasuke is enraged by this use of an Uchiha ability and threatens to make Kakashi suffer. When he does so, Sakura approaches from behind to kill him, but ultimately cannot, and Kakashi, tired from using Kamui, can't reach her in time to save her from Sasuke's retaliation. Sakura is saved by Naruto. Kakashi tells Naruto to take Sakura away. Naruto thinks that Kakashi is going to kill Sasuke. Naruto instead restrains Kakashi and fights Sasuke himself. From the clash of their Chidori and Rasengan, as well as the following conversation, Naruto and Sasuke decide to temporarily suspend hostilities until later when they, and only they, will face each other in battle. Kakashi agrees to these terms, but insists on being allowed to eliminate Tobi with Kamui when he comes to fetch Sasuke. Tobi stops him, telling him it won't work, and leaves with Sasuke. Fourth Shinobi World War, Countdown when they get back to Konoha, Kakashi meets with the Konoha Council and tells them all what had happened, including Danzo's death at Sasuke's hand. Because Konoha now needs another Hokage, Kakashi reluctantly agrees to be the appointment. He is brought before the Fire Daimyo, but before anything can be made official, they receive news that Tsunade has woken up from her coma, therefore rendering the proceedings unnecessary. He meets with Tsunade later and thanks her for waking up before he got stuck with any real responsibility. Power In the anime, Kakashi is part of a force sent to Hacho Village to help the rest of Team 7. Kakashi confronts Kabuto Yakashi, who gets away by distracting him with reincarnated ninja. Later, Kakashi meets with the village leader, Disonasu, who Kakashi recognizes as an old partner of Orochimaru. He trails Disonasu to a meeting with Kabuto, who is trying to resurrect the Ama no Hoko. A fight breaks out when Kabuto notices them, and at the conclusion of which Naruto defeats the nine-tailed Naruto clone. They are afterwards able to deactivate the Ama no Hoko, though Kabuto himself escapes once again. Paradise Life on a Boat In the anime, as Konoha starts preparing for the looming war, Kiba Inuzuka asks Kakashi to train him. Kakashi provides his ninken to Kiba in his place, believing that they'll be more useful to him. Later, Kakashi receives an apparent distress signal from Mike Guy, who is escorting Naruto to the Island Turtle. Kakashi rushes off to lend assistance, only to be told on arrival that the SOS was sent accidentally when Guy was struggling with seasickness. Unneeded, Kakashi returns to the village. Fourth Shinobi World War, Confrontation Kakashi is appointed as commander of the Allied Shinobi Forces 3rd Division. In the anime, he requests that Guy be his second in command. The 3rd Division is mobilized ahead of the other divisions in order to be on hand for any eventuality. While seeking out Nakatsuki Force, they notice and head towards one of the surprise attack division's distress flares. The 3rd Division arrives in time to save them from the reincarnated Gari, Pakura, Haku, and Zabuza Momochi. Haku and Zabuza recognize Kakashi and Sakura, who is also in the 3rd Division, and ask how Naruto is doing. Kabuto, their summoner, ends their conversation short by suppressing their personalities, so Haku and Zabuza use their last moments to beg Kakashi to defeat them. Zabuza uses the hiding and mist technique to hide his and the other's movements, putting the 3rd Division on the defensive. 
Kakashi is able to analyze their attack strategy and formulate a response, but the other reincarnated members of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen of the Mist appear on the battlefield before Kakashi has a chance to put his plan into action. Despite mounting casualties, Kakashi sticks to his original plan. He sneaks up on Zabuza and attacks him with Lightning Cutter, intending to dispel the Heavy Mist. Like the last time they fought, Haku shields the attack and Zabuza cuts at Kakashi through Haku with his Kubikiri Bocho. Kakashi avoids injury and attacks with another lightning cutter, this time hitting Zabuza and also connecting Enzuinara's shadow to his. With Zabuza immobilized and Haku damaged, both are bound by the sealing team. Kakashi, upset by how Zabuza and Haku were used for Akatsuki's purposes, takes up the Kubikiri Bocho and promises to live up to his reputation as the copier of a thousand jutsu. With the mist gone, the swordsmen seemingly retreat. Kakashi takes this opportunity to allow his team to rest and recuperate. The next day, in the anime, Kakashi defeats Jinin Akebino, and later teams up with Gai to keep Jinpachi Munashi and Kushimaru Kuririrai busy until they are also sealed. By the time he helps Sai seal Fuguki Suikazan, only three reincarnated shinobi remain. Part of the White Zetsu army then arrive to fight the 3rd Division, but they are met by one of Naruto's shadow clones, sent to lend assistance with defeating the remnants of Akatsuki's forces. 4th Shinobi World War Climax. Kakashi and Gai eventually leave the 3rd Division to join the original Naruto and Killer B in their fight with Tobi, arriving in time to stop Tobi from capturing Naruto. Seeing that Tobi has 6 reincarnated Jinjuriki, Kakashi theorizes that they each possess one of the 6 paths techniques, just as the 6 paths of pain did. From fighting them, however, none of them use any of the 6 paths techniques, leading Kakashi to believe that Tobi doesn't have the energy for it. Tobi can, at least, still use their Tailed Beast's powers, so he forces the Four Tails and Six Tails to enter Tailed Beast modes. Unable to do anything against such large opponents, Kakashi and Gai leave them to Naruto and B. After Naruto is able to free the Four Tails from Tobi's control, Tobi forces the other Jinchuriki to enter Tailed Beast modes as well. As five Tailed Beast balls bear down on them, Kakashi considers trying to use Kamui. It ends up not being necessary, as Naruto, by entering his own Tailed Beast mode, deflects their attacks and subsequently frees them from Tobi. Tobi is forced to recall the Tailed Beasts into the demonic statue of the Outer Path, which he uses against Naruto, B, Kakashi, and Gai. Fighting continues on into the night, with neither side emerging victorious. When a light descends on the reincarnated Jinchuriki, a sign that the impure world reincarnation has been cancelled, Tobi takes drastic actions and prematurely initiates the Ten Tails revival. When they realize what Tobi's doing, Kakashi and the others focus on destroying the demonic statue before it can complete its metamorphosis into the Ten Tails. Tobi defends the demonic statue from all their attacks, and as ever, is himself seemingly impervious to damage, with everything passing through him. After an exchange of attacks, of which Kakashi blocks Tobi's with Kamui, Kakashi notices some slight damage to Tobi's mask. Having a theory about this, he has Gai and Naruto help him test it and is ultimately able to confirm. Attacks warped away with Kamui at the same moment that Tobi is impervious will damage Tobi, thereby suggesting a link between their abilities. Kakashi asks where Tobi acquired his Sharingan, to which he replies it was on the same mission to the Kanabi Bridge that Kakashi got his own. Kakashi is troubled by what this might mean, but doesn't overlook the important fact that they now have a way of fighting Tobi. Kakashi secretly uses Kamui on Naruto's shadow clones to send it to Kamui's dimension, which, when Tobi retreats there to escape the real Naruto's attack, attacks Tobi and destroys his mask. When they see his face, Gai and Kakashi recognize Tobi as Obito Uchiha. Kakashi is devastated to discover that the friend whose death he's mourned for over a decade is actually alive. Kakashi asks Obito why he never returned to Konoha, to which Obito replies it's because Kakashi allowed Rin Nohara to die. Obito assures Kakashi that he doesn't blame him for the world's flaws before attacking him with Fire Release Blast Wave Wild Dance. Obito is soon joined by a reincarnated Madara Uchiha, who decides to take Naruto's Nine Tails and Killer B's Eight Tails before the Ten Tails is revived. Kakashi, meanwhile, tries to question Obito more, who ignores him and instead uses his own Kamui on Kakashi. Kakashi figures out how to use Kamui to return, prompting Obito to try and kill him. Naruto blocks the attack and vows not to let his teammates die. Naruto's words remind Kakashi of the Obito he used to know, inspiring him to join the offensive again. After the Ninetales replenishes his chakra, Kakashi lets Obito send him to Kamui's dimension, where he attacks Obito's body parts whenever they transport there to avoid Naruto's attacks. He then uses Kamui to return, only to witness the Ten Tails complete its revival. Obito and Madara attach themselves to the Ten Tails, focusing its destructive power against Kakashi and the others. 
just as they're about to be killed, the combined allied shinobi forces arrive to help, deflecting the Ten Tails tailed Beast Ball. Sakura heals Kakashi before they join the allies' coordinated effort to restrain the Ten Tails, but it breaks free by transforming. Many die in the Ten Tails counterattack, but another coordinated assault successfully removes the Ten Tails from Madara and Obito's control. Now free to act on its own, the Ten Tails prepares to use Tenpenshi. Kakashi attempts to stop it with Kamui, but Obito intercepts him and takes him to Kamui's dimension. When they get there, Kakashi lunges at Obito with the Lightning Cutter, but stops short of actually killing him with it. When Obito accuses him of having a guilty conscience, Kakashi tries to explain the circumstances of Rin's death, but Obito is already aware that she chose to die. That fact alone convinces Obito that the world as is is not worth protecting. Accepting that Obito's mind can't be changed, Kakashi attacks in order to protect the world that the Obito he used to know cared about. After a prolonged exchange, Kakashi pierces Obito's heart with a lightning-infused kunai. Obito escapes and Kakashi, similarly badly damaged, collapses. Birth of the Ten Tails Jinjuriki As Kakashi treats his wounds, he catches brief glimpses of what Obito sees due to their common Sharingan, his fight with Naruto and Sasuke. Kakashi ponders Obito's persistence in trying to convince Naruto that his actions are justified, and concludes that Obito himself is not actually convinced that they are. He returns to the battle just after Obito's defeat, prepared to personally finish him off, but is stopped by a reincarnated Minato Namikaze. Having sensed the same misgivings on Obito that Kakashi did, Minato convinces Kakashi to try yet again to speak with him. Kakashi acknowledges that Rin's death is proof of a flawed system that may not be possible to fix, but he believes that Naruto should be at least given a chance to try since he still has friends to empower him. Obito decides to put the same faith in Naruto that Kakashi has, and in order to make up for all that he's done, prepares to use the Samsara of Heavenly Life technique to revive everyone that has died. Because this will cost Obito his life, Kakashi tries to convince him to find another way to make amends. But Obito replies that he doesn't deserve such an easy solution. As he's performing the technique, however, Obito's body is taken over by Black Zetsu. Kakashi and Minato are confused by what's happened, so Obito explains that he's been forced to revive Madara instead. Black Zetsu then attempts to take Obito's Rinnegan, but the presence of Kakashi and Minato prevents it from safely doing so. It decides instead to fully take control of Obito's body so they can't attack it without damaging Obito too. As they wait, the demonic statue of the Outer Path is summoned by Madara from Obito's body. Kakashi tries to use Kamui on it, but succeeds only in removing its right arm. Obito briefly regains control for long enough to implore Kakashi to destroy his Rinnegan so Madara can't acquire that too. Just as Kakashi and Minato psych themselves up to do so, they are met by Gara and Sakura, who are working to keep Naruto alive after Madara removed the Nine Tails from his body. Gara asks Minato to seal his half of the Nine Tails chakra into Naruto in order to save his life. Black Zetsu intercepts the transfer and takes the Nine Tails for itself. Madara, now the Ten Tails Jinchuriki, soon arrives to see what's taking Black Zetsu so long. Black Zetsu attempts to go to him, but Obito reasserts control over his body and forces it to stay. Obito decides that he will help save Naruto. He first steals fragments of Madara's chakra and then instructs Kakashi to send Naruto and Sakura to Kamui's dimension. He plans to go there to join Naruto, but his own Kamui is slow enough for Madara to stop him. Kakashi, by using Kamui on Obito at the same time that he uses it on himself, is able to accelerate the teleportation and allow him to get away. The attack that misses Obito nearly kills Kakashi, but he's saved by Gai. Aware of how few options they have, Gai decides to use the Eight Gates released formation over Kakashi's protests. Because Gai's time is limited, Kakashi, Minato, Gara, and Rock Lee combine efforts to neutralize as many of Madara's truth-seeking balls as they can. Kakashi, carried by Gara, warps away a part of a defensive wall Madara erects around himself. In the end, Gai badly injures Madara before he collapses, but fails to defeat him. Madara is stopped from finishing Gai off by Naruto's return, who Obito successfully saved. Naruto and Sasuke team up against Madara, putting him on the defensive and making him desperate for the Rinnegan in Obito's possession. Having no other options, Madara takes Kakashi's Sharingan and, upon implanting it in himself, uses Kamui to go after Obito. Sakura is teleported back shortly afterwards, Obito's attempt to save her. She prepares to treat Kakashi's eye, but Naruto steps in and uses his Six Paths Chakra to restore Kakashi's original eye. As they wait for Madara's inevitable return, Kakashi reminds them of their first lesson as Team 7, the importance of teamwork. Madara eventually returns, Black Zetsu using his control over Obito's body to teleport them back. Kakashi watches as his students attack Madara, but aren't able to stop him from casting the infinite Tsukiyomi. Kaguya Otsutsuki Strikes 
While the world around them falls to the infinite Tsukiyomi, Sasuke uses his own Rinnegan to shield Naruto, Sakura, and Kakashi from its effects. When they emerge, they find Madara has bound the world's population with God, nativity of a world of trees, and trapped them all within perpetual dreams. Madara confronts them and insists that he has ended all conflicts, and that only Team 7, as the only remaining opposition, would seek to renew the cycle of death that plagued the world for centuries. As he's talking, Madara is stabbed from behind by Black Zetsu, who transfers to him from Obito's body to convert him into Kaguya Otsutsuki, Black Zetsu's true master. Kaguya, the origin of Chakra, now has access to the Chakra supplies of everyone trapped in the infinite Tsukiyomi. She wants Team 7's Chakra as well, so she transports them to one of Kaguya's dimensions, a sea of lava. Sasuke saves Naruto from falling in the lava, Kakashi grabs Sakura, ties himself to an unconscious Obito with a scroll, and pins Obito to a wall in order to do the same. The heat causes the scroll to burn up, but Naruto sends a shadow clone to catch them. Unable to continue, Kakashi only watches as Naruto and Sasuke fight Kaguya. Sakura and Obito, once he wakes up, lend support, but Kaguya keeps shifting dimensions in her attempt to defeat them. Kaguya eventually moves them into a dimension with powerful gravity, limiting Naruto and Sasuke's movements while she attacks them with all killing ash bones. Prepared to give his life to lend what little assistance he can, Kakashi stands in front of Sasuke to take the attack while Obito does the same for Naruto. Although they are unified in their willingness to die, Obito decides it's too soon for Kakashi and uses Kamui on the attack bound for him, leaving Obito unable to save himself. Obito's body dissolves, but his spirit returns shortly afterwards and inhabits Kakashi. Obito feels that Kakashi will become the next Hokage, and wishes to reward him by letting Kakashi use his two Mangekyo Sharingan. With his Mangekyo, Kakashi is able to manifest Susano. He first uses it to save Sakura from Kaguya, and then uses Kamui Shuriken to save Naruto and Sasuke. When Kaguya creates an expansive truth-seeking ball to finally kill them all, Kakashi, realizing that this is their last opportunity, forms a plan of attack. Kakashi pierces through her with Kamui Lightning Cutter. Naruto uses Shadow Clones to exhaust some of her countermeasures, and Kakashi uses Kamui on the rest. Sasuke moves closer to her in order to place a seal on her. Sakura punches her when she tries to escape. Kaguya is defeated, the tailed beasts are removed from her bodies, and she is trapped alongside Black Zetsu with Six Paths, Chibaku Tensei. The Sage of Six Paths summons them all back from Kaguya's dimensions and congratulates them for their victory. As his spirit leaves Kakashi's body, Obito apologizes for everything he did when he was alive, but Kakashi states that he's glad they rekindled their friendship before the end. The Sage of Six Paths explains how Naruto and Sasuke can end the infinite Tsukiyomi, but Sasuke has one intention before that, killing the tailed beasts and the five Kage. Kakashi is dismayed, assuming Sasuke is still after revenge. Sasuke replies that he only wants to change the world for the better, making hard decisions like this so the world won't get embroiled in another war. Too exhausted to do anything himself, Kakashi stays behind with Sakura while Naruto and Sasuke leave to fight. The Sage of Six Paths uses his last moments to talk with Kakashi, remarking that the centuries of hate may be on the verge of ending due to the love Naruto displays for everyone. The following day, Kakashi and Sakura locate Naruto and Sasuke at the Valley of the End, where the Sage's words have proven true. Naruto has convinced Sasuke to give up his intention. Sakura heals their injuries, and they proceed to end the Infinite Tsukiyomi, and in the end, the Fourth Shinobi World War. Upon returning to the village, Kakashi attends the mass funeral for the casualties of the war. In the wake of the village recovering from the war, Kakashi succeeds Tsunade and becomes the sixth Hokage, although he is dismayed with the amount of paperwork. Soon after, in the anime, he offers Naruto the chance to become a Jonin at the cost of him spending two years studying. Blank Period in the anime, Kakashi and Tsunade stopped by the Konoha military police force from exposing the identities of everyone connected to Root in the aftermath of the group disbanding, in order to avoid suspicion among villagers thinking each other were former members. Kakashi Hiden, Lightning in the Icy Sky Nearly a year after the war, Kakashi has yet to officially take on the duties of being Hokage, feeling he's unqualified, leaving Tsunade to continue managing Konoha's affairs. Kakashi later leaves for a mission in the Land of Waves, there, Kakashi oversees security for the Tobi Shachimaru's maiden voyage. As the ship prepares to take off, Kakashi spots someone sneaking aboard, discovering it to be Might Guy, who has always wanted to fly. Kakashi finds somewhere out of the way for them to ride out the trip. During the voyage, the Tobi Shachimaru is hijacked by the Ryuha Armament Alliance, who demand that Konoha release their leader, Gario, from the Blood Prison, vowing to kill the hostages and destroy the Tobi Shachimaru if their demands aren't met. Kakashi summons his Ninken to seek out the explosives planted around the ship and confronts the hijackers. 
Kaio remotely kills two hostages with ice, forcing Kakashi to surrender to prevent more from being killed. Gai soon appears to fight the leader of the hijackers, Ryo, keeping him busy so that Kakashi can free himself from his restraints without being noticed. Kakashi is prevented from helping Gai by the appearance of Kaio. Aware that the Armament Alliance was originally motivated by the death of Kaio's innocent son, Kakashi tries to point out that the Armament Alliance's actions now threaten the innocent passengers. Kaio is upset by Kakashi's observation and attacks with ice release, earthen consecutive chains of ice, creating a hole in the ship that starts sucking out Kakashi, Guy, and the passengers. Before he falls from the ship, Kakashi notices Kaio's mask has come off, who he recognizes as the woman he helped before. Kakashi, Guy, and the passengers are saved by Sai, who takes the others to safety, and Kakashi back to the Tobishachimaru. When Kakashi returns, Ryo is threatening to allow a sick child to die, believing it's a fair trade for the death of Kaio's son. Kakashi attempts to stop him, but is immediately bound by chains of ice that Kaio planted on him earlier. Kakashi reasons with Kaio and convinces her to let Sai take the child to a doctor. Kakashi is afterwards locked away. While breaking out, he concludes that the hijackers plan to turn the passengers into human bombs. Kakashi confronts Ryo about this, and Kaio, unaware that this was intended, is aghast. Kaio attacks Kakashi and removes the chains of ice so he can fight back, but he stops short of killing her when he realizes that's what she wants out of regret for her actions. The damaged Tobishachimaru starts rocking violently, flinging Ryo from the ship, and then rises into the air uncontrollably, threatening to suffocate everyone aboard. Kakashi and Kaio puncture the helium sacks, keeping the ship afloat, and Kaio attempts to control its descent with her ice. When she runs out of moisture with which to make ice, Kakashi leaps from the ship into a storm cloud, using purple electricity to produce rain. He is saved by the third Tsujikage, who delivers him to the ground. Kakashi watches as the Konoha Eleven recapture prisoners escaping during the Armament Alliance's breakout and feels that the generation will someday replace his own. Kakashi feels that he, as Hokage, would like to watch over things until they're ready. Konoha's ninja search the crashed Tobishachimaru, treating the passengers and taking Kaio into custody. Tsunade threatens to have her executed since she is the highest ranking conspirator to survive the failed jailbreak, but Kakashi requests that he be allowed to pass sentence instead, what would be his first act as Hokage. Kaio will stay at the blood prison for the rest of her life, acting as warden by using her chains of ice on the prisoners. Both Tsunade and Kaio agree to these terms. With his status as Hokage and Naruto's testimony, Kakashi pardons Sasuke and releases him from prison. He and Sakura see Sasuke off as he leaves Konoha to wander the world, with Kakashi requesting him not to cause too much trouble. Shikamaru Hiden, a cloud drifting in silent darkness. The shinobi union that emerged after the end of the fourth shinobi world war created an unprecedented peace between the ninja villages. Two years after the end of the war, that peace is threatened by the emergence of the Land of Silence. Kakashi sent Sai and a team of Anbu to the Land of Silence to investigate, but all go missing. The last communique suggests the Land of Silence's leader, Gengo, must be behind it all. In order to protect the Shinobi Union's interests, Gengo must be assassinated, a task Shikamaru Nara volunteers for. Kakashi assigns two Anbu, Ro and Soku, to assist Shikamaru on what is otherwise to be a top secret mission. Naruto becomes concerned when Shikamaru fails to return from his mission and barges into Kakashi's office demanding an explanation. Kakashi attempts to maintain the mission's secrecy, but eventually relents even allowing other Konoha personnel to go to the Land of Silence. Shikamaru is rescued, and when he returns to Konoha, Kakashi gives him a week off. The last, Naruto the movie. Two years after the Four Shinobi World War, Kakashi attends a Five Kage summit to discuss the imminent crashing of the moon. Shortly after he returns to Konoha, Hanabi Hyuga is kidnapped by Toneri Otsutsuki. Kakashi sends the Hanabi rescue team to save her. He also gives them a special clock that counts down to the moon's collision, asking that they stop it if Toneri is in any way connected. In the following days, meteors increasingly rain down on the world and the Kage decide that the moon must be destroyed. When Sasuke returns an injured Hizashi Hyuga to Konoha, Hizashi reports that Hanabi, and by extension her rescuers, are on the moon. Kakashi reports this to the other Kage who decide to delay the moon's destruction in order to give Naruto and the others a chance to save them. Naruto ultimately succeeds, using the Nine Tails to carve a mission complete message into the moon's surface. Sakura Hiden, thoughts of love riding upon a spring breeze. After separate attacks are made on Homura Mitokado and the Land of Fire's Daimyo, Kakashi assigns Sai to intervene. Kakashi believes that Kido Sumiki might be somehow involved, so recommends that Sai focus on him. A few days later, Sakura returns from a visit to Tsunagakure with rumors that Sasuke had been plotting against Konoha. 
Neither he nor Sakura believe it's really Sasuke, so he assigns Sakura and Ino Yamanaka to look into the lookalike. As the rumors start spreading, Kakashi attempts to contact Sasuke to ask if he knows anything, but his inquiries are not answered. Kakashi informs Sakura that the Raikage is contemplating a Kage summit on the rumors and the possibility of hunting down Sasuke. Sai eventually reports that his investigation is apparently the same as Sakura's, so Kakashi combines them into the Ino Saku Sai. Konoha Hiden, the perfect day for a wedding. Kakashi is invited to Naruto's marriage to Hinata Hyuga. He plans to go, but worries that Naruto and Hinata's friends might not be able to attend due to their mission assignments. He therefore gives everyone an assignment to bring a gift to the wedding, thereby ensuring that they will all be available. On the day of the wedding, Kakashi greets foreign guests such as Killer B and the 5th Kazakage. Sasuke Shinden, Book of Sunrise Kakashi informs Naruto, Sakura, and Sai that more than a hundred Kumo and Kiri Shinobi have gone missing and learns from Sakura that a few Konoha Shinobi are missing as well. Sai informs Kakashi that he had been in contact with Sasuke, whom Kakashi had previously asked to lead the investigation into the disappearances due to that only his ocular powers can cancel Genjutsu, and Kumo Gakure and Kiri Gakure had agreed to cooperate in the investigation. Kakashi surmises that a Genjutsu user captured the missing shinobi and is using Genjutsu on them to attack the hidden villages. The village is then attacked by intruders, and Kakashi orders his former students to join with Shikamaru, Choji, and Ino in order to help stop the intruders, whom he later learns are some of the missing shinobi. Once the shinobi are defeated and captured, Kakashi sends a message of the incident to Sasuke, who is traveling to the Land of Lightning and stops at a village in the Land of Hot Water. Sasuke, in turn, sends a letter about his suspicions about the Dark Thunder group being involved. Kakashi has Yamato meet with Sasuke to exchange intel on the situation. Kakashi receives a message from Sasuke that he captured the true culprits, Chino and Nawaki, in Yugakure. After Sasuke drops him off at another village, Kakashi arrives to meet with the two, but explains he received a good word from Sasuke about them. Rather than putting them in prison, he is offering them a chance to atone by working for Kumagakure and Kirigakure, which they accept. New Era on the day of Naruto's Hokage inauguration, he fails to show up, having been knocked out earlier. With no time left to wait, Kakashi has Konohamaru Sarutobi impersonate Naruto so that the festivities can proceed as planned. Retired from active duty, Kakashi continued to assist in village matters and advise his successor. Academy Entrance Arc In the anime, when learning about the mysterious attacks in the village, Kakashi begins investigating the incident and learns that it involves a root project. Upon reporting his findings to Naruto at the Hokage office, the two discuss the investigation with Shikamaru. Realizing the culprit planned to unleash Nue on the village now that it was nearing completion, Kakashi went in search of the rogue student. Arriving at Senju Park, Kakashi immediately severed the creature's tails, resulting in the spontaneous emergence of dozens of smaller tails, which it used to steal chakra from Sai's men. After saving them, Kakashi organized the team to hold off the creature. As Naruto arrives, Kakashi stops him from fighting, explaining that the creature's intention was to gather enough chakra to produce a powerful explosion to destroy the village. As the shinobi attempt to subdue the beast, it teleports away, much to Kakashi's surprise. Kakashi deduced that while this creature was a summoning, it uniquely existed normally in a separate dimension, leaving others unable to follow it. Konoha Shinden, Steam Ninja Scrolls on the day of the Kage Summit in Konoha, Kakashi leaves for the Land of Hot Water with Gai and Mirai Sarutobi. Later, the group arrived in the Land of Hot Water. There they found annual festival-slash-competition where a town was split between two beliefs on its origins, some believing that there is a cat spirit and others believed it to be a dog spirit. Mirai stopped the chaos by producing a fire release in unison with the Genjutsu to form a cat-dog spirit, which told the townspeople to stop the feuding. When Gai believed the Genjutsu to be a demon and attacked it, he accidentally knocked down the main wall that split the town, thereby convincing the villagers that it was a sign for them to truly come together. Afterwards, Kakashi applauded Mirai on combining the signature skills of her parents. During a stop at an inn, they met a young orphan named Tatsumi, who, despite having no money, was determined to visit all the hot springs in the land in memory of her late mother. At Mirai's request, it was agreed that the little girl could join them on their trip. Later, during the trip, Tatsumi and Mirai snuck off in the hopes of a nearby hot spring rumored to let people talk with loved ones from the past. Kakashi and Gai soon found them, learning that the rumored hot spring was a ruse conceived by remnants of the near-forgotten Jashin cult to restore their former glory and power. Kakashi, along with Gai and Mirai, swiftly defeated the fanatics. Later, it was revealed that Kakashi and Gai's vacation was in fact a cover for their working with the Land of Hot Water to uncover the truth behind the missing girls. Graduation Exams Arc 
Offering his services as a proctor for the upcoming graduation exams, Kakashi disguised himself as Tsukiya, a freelance reporter who interviewed various students to better understand their respective nature. After classes, Kakashi met up with Boruto, who helped him meet with the students. As Boruto was amazed that his classmates all had plans for the future, some as ninja and some decided to pursue goals outside ninja work, Kakashi noted that while the world had become in less need of ninja, ninja skills can prove valuable in other fields. He also noted that regardless, one must always decide on goals if they wish to grow as individuals. Later, talking to Iruka in his office, Iruka suggested that Kakashi not be too hard on the students come the final exams. Kakashi clarifies that even in peaceful times, they can't allow students with contemptuous attitudes to become shinobi, and as such will be as challenging as ever. During the practical test of the exams, the students were left awe-stricken that the 6th Hokage was to be their head proctor. It was explained that while Shino Aburame, Anko Mitarashi, and Konohamaru Sarutobi would be evaluating the students' respective performances in a 24-hour field combat, ultimately only one student could pass. That student would be the one who takes a single bell from Kakashi's hip. While others were annoyed by this, Kakashi insisted that they had already had enough shinobi in this era of peace. As the test began, many of the students began to scramble. Boruto soon found Kakashi and attacked hard, but the legendary ninja easily saw through his tactics. While admitting that Boruto was truly a genius well above the rest of his generation, he still lacked a very crucial aspect to deserve being a ninja, quickly pinning the Uzumaki down. Kakashi explained that a ninja with no resolve will only doom themselves, and that Boruto is solely responsible for his classmates becoming so lazy and carefree. To prove his point, he revealed himself as Tsukiya from earlier, showing how well he knows Boruto. As Boruto continued to struggle free from the sixth hold, his fellow classmates provided enough distraction for him to escape. Later, having listened to the nature of Kakashi's words, but also to the encouragement of his friends, Boruto conceived a plan to save the captured classmates and pass the test realizing the true nature behind it. Boruto designed a group assault on Kakashi, but he quickly saw through the facade, easily repelling the entire class's group assault on him. However, this was a trick that drew Kakashi into a group string light formation. Deeply impressed, Kakashi attempted to repel them with a lightning burst, but the students refused to let the technique be broken, even when knocked to the ground. Ultimately, time ran out before anyone could get the bell. Despite Boruto's plan failing, Kakashi passed everyone, cheerfully noting while they actually had zero chance of taking the bell, they succeeded in the true goal of the test, teamwork and loyalty. Naruto Shinden, Parent and Child Day When Konohagakure began a new holiday, Parent and Child Day, Kakashi discovered that the constantly traveling Sasuke had returned to the village and was struggling to connect with his daughter. Realizing that Sasuke hardly knew anything about his daughter since he had been away for most of her life, Kakashi decided to help out using ideas from his Icha Icha series. Soon realizing that these ideas were better suited for a romantic couple, as they only succeeded in further estranging Sasuke from his daughter and even making Sasuke more furious at Kakashi, the retired Hokage suggested asking Sakura for advice since she knows her family better. Versus Momoshiki Arc as investigations on Kaguya continued, it was discovered that her creation of the White Zetsu army was an extra precaution for a looming threat. Sometime after attending a village meeting with Naruto, Kakashi attends the finals for the Chunin exams in Konoha alongside Gai and Iruka. When the stadium is attacked by Kinshiki and Momoshiki Otsutsuki, Kakashi helps rescue spectators in the arena. Mitsuki's Disappearance Arc in the anime, after the defeat of the attackers and Konohagakure's recovery from the attack, a Kage summit was held. Kakashi and the other retired Kage were in attendance to discuss the still looming threat of the Otsutsuki. The next morning, when two Chunin gate guards were attacked by unknown assailants, the village was put on lockdown. Kakashi joined Naruto and his advisors when overseeing Ino probe one of the guards' minds for answers, learning that Mitsuki had left willingly with the attackers. When Naruto revealed to the others Mitsuki was in fact Orochimaru's son, much outrage followed from learning that Naruto would permit an offspring of the man who killed the third Hokage live in Konohagakure, let alone keep it a secret. Naruto rationalized this on the grounds that Orochimaru's conduct had changed from before and for his aid in investigating the Otsutsuki. Despite this, noting the unpredictable nature of Orochimaru, the meeting ended and deemed the Oto-born boy as a threat. As the council and Hokage continue to talk about how to best deal with this, Kakashi voices overall approval of Naruto's actions, noting that Naruto would never do anything he thought would bring danger to the village, and that the elders wouldn't even consider letting the boy in the village had they known the full story to begin with. Kara Actuation Arc In the anime, Kakashi felt a bad air about him, worrying that things were going to get difficult for him. Kakashi's fears were soon realized when Boruto approached him for help. 
He got Ibiki Morino to transfer Shojoji from prison to a police facility to face off against Boruto. While Ibiki was concerned by this, Kakashi promised to take full responsibility. As Shojoji reminded Kakashi of the terms of their agreement, Kakashi swore to keep his word to reduce Shojoji's sentence, but that also meant that Shojoji would have to actually defeat Boruto. During the match, Shojoji's wind release Shield of the Wind Count proved to be as powerful against Boruto's attacks as previously. This prompted Boruto to use his new compression Rasengan. It was able to overpower Shojoji's defenses and swiftly defeat him. As Kakashi commended Boruto for coming up with the alternate plan to condense his Rasengan rather than expand it, Boruto collapsed as his long hours of training caught up to him, still impressing Kakashi with Boruto's capacities. Kakashi brought Boruto back to the hospital to recover. Upon his awakening, Kakashi applauded Boruto's accomplishments but warned him of the dangers of his new technique. Noting that the compression Rasengan comes with great recoil that can cause great strain on his arm, it is not a technique that Boruto should use often. Did you enjoy our video? Make sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.